Hey guys, it's Mag212, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to paint a Nerf gun. This is mostly just a general guide for how to paint any Nerf gun. It doesn't just apply to a specific Nerf blaster. The first step in painting a Nerf gun is to completely disassemble your gun. You can accomplish this by taking a screwdriver and unscrewing all of the screws in your Nerf gun and then taking it apart. I got a lot of questions on my last painting tutorial. Yes, you can paint it without taking it apart. It just doesn't look as good and in my opinion, it's easier for me to take it apart because I know how to reassemble it. But if you do take your gun apart, be careful and make sure you know exactly where all of the parts go. It's helpful to take a picture or a video of yourself while you're doing it so you know how to put everything back together. But I've unscrewed all of the screws in this Nerf gun. This is obviously modified and I can now take off the top part of the shell. Now that you've taken the top part off, you're going to want to take out all of the screws. So just dump it upside down and all of your screws will fall out. If some of them don't come out, you can just pop them out with your screwdriver. And once you have all of the screws, you can gather them up and put them in a Ziploc bag just so you don't lose them. So now that I've taken apart my Nerf long shot, I'm going to be taking out the internal components. I want to keep the front tip orange, and it's important, especially if you're painting your gun with black, that you keep an orange tip so police officers know that you're playing with a toy and not a real gun. I also don't paint functioning internals like uh, this plunger assembly in the long shot and these pieces right here. Basically, you just want to take out all of the parts you're not going to want to paint like springs. It would be useless to paint that. However, I am going to be painting the trigger, this barrel piece, and this little front piece. Once your shell is completely empty and it has nothing in it, that means that you have successfully disassembled it. And I'm going to take the contents that I'm not going to paint and put them into a large Ziploc bag. It's helpful to put your stuff away in a bag just so you know where everything is and you don't lose any components. I'm also going to be painting a magazine for my Nerf gun. As you can see, I have covered off the top because I don't want to paint the top because the paint will scratch off when I put it in and out of my Nerf gun. So I just took some painter's tape and electrical tape and wrapped that just to cover it and I'll take it off after I'm done painting the magazine. I also like to keep an orange tip on my barrel so I just tape this off with a combination of electrical tape and painter's tape. Once you have all of your internal components out, that means that you are almost ready to start painting. I like to take some very high grit sandpaper. This is 320 grit, which is very fine. And I just run that over my blaster a little bit, sanding off the warning labels and also just kind of sanding it down so my paint sticks a little better. That'll just help in the overall durability of your paint job and your paint won't scratch off or chip off. But now I'm left with my shell and the components that I want to paint. So I'm going to go outside and start painting. Okay, so before you paint your Nerf Blaster, there are a few things that you should know. First of all, you should have very good lighting. I have fluorescent lights in my garage, which is where I am right now. You can paint outside in the sunlight, but I choose to paint in an enclosed area so I'm not bothering anyone. You also want to have something that you can paint on. I have brown paper, which I got on a big roll at Home Depot. So I just cut out a large rectangular piece and I laid my Nerf gun down on it. You can also use newspaper or a tarp. And keep in mind, you don't have to have a paper as large as mine because my gun is fairly large, but you do need enough so that you don't end up painting over. I don't really care as much because it's inside my garage and it's not really a place that you see all that often. But if you are painting on your mother's new cobblestone driveway, you might want to put a lot of paper or just paint somewhere else. A few materials you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need a respirator mask, especially if you're painting in an enclosed area. This just blocks out certain harmful fumes from your paint cans. And then, of course, you're going to need a can of spray paint. I'm choosing to use an automotive vinyl and fabric dye coating. This can be found at AutoZone or a lot of auto parts shops. So I'm going to be using this because I like its adhesion to plastic and it gives a very durable finish. 
And as you may have noticed, my guns are inside out. That's because I'm going to be painting the insides first. You may be thinking, why are you going to paint the insides? That's just a waste of paint. But if you have a gun like mine that's orange, yellow, blue, and a bunch of other colors, you don't want to see those colors when you look up into your magazine well or if you look into certain spots. So you want to get the inside just so from every angle it looks good and it's matching. You don't want to see a fade into a weird yellow color that's out of place. So I'm just going to be painting the inside. Just to point out a few places you should look out for, the top of your tactical rail, if you just paint the outside, you will not get this area, so you want to get that. Also in holes, like in your handle, if you have a thumb hole stock like me, and in these little vents, sometimes you can see through, so you want to get that. And especially through the magazine well, and in any other area where you might be able to see. So just think about it and put your blaster back together. Make sure that it's covered from every angle and if it's not then you can go back and cover it with more paint. I'm just going to start by putting on my mask and applying a very thin layer to all of the pieces. I'll go over the painting technique a little more when I'm painting the outside, but you just want to make sure that you have nice even strokes and you cover everything from side to side. I finished applying all of my coats and I just let it dry. Some of the parts are not covered. You can still see a little yellow when you have the blaster apart. However, that's not important because you're not going to see those parts when you close up your Nerf gun. But at this point, I'm completely finished painting the inside of the blaster, so I'm going to turn it to the other side and paint the outside. Quickly going over a little spray painting technique, you just want to go across in little diagonal swipes, but basically just make sure that everything is even and you're going very slow, no need to rush. Also don't apply too much paint in one area. Let it dry and once it's dry you can apply another coat. Don't apply all at once because it will either take a long time to dry or it will start to drip and that never looks good. So that's my first coat. As you can see, I clearly did not get all of the places at once, but I did give a good coating, and I will let that dry for about uh, maybe 10-15 minutes. It may vary depending on what kind of paint you're using. I know Rust-Oleum stuff takes a lot longer to dry, but I'm just going to wait that amount of time, and then I'm going to come back to apply another coat. Okay, so now I'm back, and my coat has dried. I actually only waited 10 minutes but it is completely dry now, and that's not really necessary, but I like to let it dry a little bit before I put another coat. So that's it. I think that is one of my final coats. I will go back and touch up little parts that I missed, but I think that's done for the most part. I'm just going to go and paint the other components. Now I'm just going to go in and touch up little parts with my spray paint, and I have some disposable gloves on just so that I can pick the guns up and don't have to worry about my hands getting sprayed.
Once you're satisfied with how everything is, you can go ahead and take your guns inside for the next step, which is detailing. I'm inside now with my Nerf gun. As you can see, I have a lot of components. I'm just going to declutter the area because I'm going to be focusing on the main blaster. The first thing you're going to need is paint brushes. I'm going to be doing the details on the gun with paint brushes, and I'm going to be using Citadel brush paint. You can get Citadel brush paint from gamesworkshop.com, amazon.com, or on eBay. I find that high quality acrylic brushes and nice paints will help you in the long run, especially if this is your first painted Nerf gun. I also have a dry paper towel and a wet paper towel. This is just so you can wipe off any paint mistakes that you make because this is acrylic paint and it will come off with a little bit of water before it's dried. Now getting on to a few tips before I get into it. First tip is plan out what you're going to do before you do it. You want to know exactly what you're going to paint before you go in and do it. Second tip is to choose areas that you think are easy to paint. I usually choose elevated surfaces or things that have clear outlines just because the lines are a bit neater and it will appear that you have a cleaner paint job that way. Tip number three, don't apply too much paint to your brush. You can always go back and put more coats after it's dried. And now I forgot what tip I'm up to, so that's unfortunate. And it's also unfortunate because I forgot what my last tip was. I know there was one more, but I will probably think of it while I am teaching you guys. But first, you want to crack open your paints and dip your paintbrush in the paint. As you can see, I just have a very light coating. I'm going to start by painting the front little part of the long shot. There are also no mistakes in painting, remember that? You can always fix these so-called mistakes by uh, kind of making them more obvious. And if you make them more obvious, people won't think they're mistakes. Unless, of course, you screwed up super badly. But as you can see, I'm just going around and applying a little bit of paint it's helpful to smoothen it out just so you get a very smooth paint application. Use the edges to your advantages. I think I might have already said that though. But basically what I mean is you can kind of use the edge of your paintbrush or rather the edge of the shell to get some super clean lines and you just angle your brush a little bit and it should look very good. And of course you can flip your blaster any which way just to make painting easier for you. So that's my first coat on this area. I think it looks super good so far and I'm just going to let that dry and while I'm letting that dry waiting to put on the next coat I'm going to work on another area. And once again, that's only our first coat, so either you can go back to this part and put on another coat if you feel like that, or you can just continue to move on and then go back once you're ready to go back. And once again, I'm not painting this fast. I'm actually speeding up the footage because I'm taking my time right now and I don't think you want to watch an hour of me painting a Nerf gun. If I get enough requests for it, I will post an untime-lapse video of me painting this Nerf gun but I'm not sure as many people want to watch me paint for an hour at a time. Another way to get more complexity with your paint job without doing all this brush detailing nonsense is you can uh, kind of paint the pieces that come out of the blaster completely. 
This is the dart holder for my Firefly stock. This is the front aesthetic piece and the access door. You can just paint these however you want. It doesn't have to be super neat because when you put them into the gun, you won't be able to see the tiny little mistakes. Now that I've finished painting the other side of the shell with my primary color, I am now done with the primary color and I'm going to move on to my secondary accent colors. I'm going to be doing some very fine detailing with this Citadel paint. It's a chrome color, so I'm going to be using a finer brush as I'm going to be doing finer details. I have now finished all of my detailing and ordinarily I would be done because this is the last step of course. But in order to protect the paint job that you work so hard on, you want to give it a clear protective coat. I've taken my gun outside again and put it down on my tarp and I'm going to be using this uh, Duplicolor clear coat. I used to use the Rust-Oleum clear coats, however I don't support them anymore because recently they have just not been working out for me. I'm going to be using this clear coat instead. It's a Duplicolor trim and bumper paint and it's a clear protective coat. I usually use the Duplicolor matte wheel clear coat that Coop uses, but I don't have any right now and this is just as good. The technique for clear coating is essentially the same as your spray painting, so I'm just going to go over and give it a very thin coat. I've got a few good coats on my gun now, so I'm going to bring it inside for the final step, which is reassembly. Okay, so this is my finished painted Nerf gun. I'm not going to spend time showing you how to reassemble because it will vary based on what Nerf gun you are painting. Like I said in the beginning of the video, just take pictures of your internals and make sure you know where they go so you can reassemble. But this is the end result, and as you can see, it looks very nice. The paint application is very smooth, and it's also very durable because I applied that clear coat. But that's my tutorial on how to paint a Nerf gun. If you have a question or comment regarding how to paint a Nerf gun, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. But that's the end of my tutorial, so thanks for watching.